Recently, AMD and Nvidia executed some price cuts across their entire line of current generation GPUs. That means the GeForce GTX 980 and Radeon R9 390X are more affordable than ever at the bargain basement price of $470 and $390 respectively. Okay, so they're both hideously expensive, but that seems to be the price of high-end gaming these days. The point being, if you have around $400-ish to drop on a graphics card, which should you buy? The more affordable 390X certainly seems very tempting, but should you invest a bit more in the GTX 980, or will you reach a point of diminishing returns? Well, strap yourself in as I take you through an in-depth 22 game analysis that compares the GTX 980 and R9 390X head to head. Testing takes part at 1440p and using fraps we'll be reporting the average, minimum and frame time performance. Both graphics cards provided a smooth 69 FPS average frame rate in Batman Arkham Knight at 1440p, though the 390X did dip down to a slightly lower 56 FPS frame rate. Despite the slightly lower minimum frame rate of the 390X, the frame time performance was the same as each card took just 18.6 milliseconds between frames. Previously, we found the GTX 980 and R9 390X to be neck and neck in our Battlefield 4 test, but it seems AMD's new Crimson driver gives the 390X a slight performance boost. The 390X was 2 frames per second faster on average of 1440p. Another close battle can be found in Black Ops 3 as the 980 was just a single frame faster at 1440p. That said, when comparing the minimum frame rate, the 980 was 3 FPS faster, though again, this isn't exactly a significant margin. The Civilization Beyond Earth performance is interesting, as the 390X provided the highest average frame rate, but was considerably slower than the 980 when comparing the minimum frame rate. This afforded the 980 a slightly better frame time result as well. Both the 980 and 390X averaged 44 FPS at 1440p in Crisis 3, though again we find it's the 980 that delivers the better minimum frame rate result and consequently the better frame time performance. The Dragon Age Inquisition performance was virtually neck and neck as the 980 was just 1 FPS faster on average, while both provided the same minimum frame rate result. Despite that, the 980 delivered considerably better frame time performance. Although both graphics cards provide a very playable performance in F1 2015 at 1440p, the 980 was considerably faster, reaching 80 frames per second opposed to just 70 FPS for the 390X. Despite the rather large frame rate discrepancy, the frame time results were very similar. Fallout 4 played best on the 980, though the difference in the average frame rate was just 3 FPS. That said, it was the minimum frame rate that made up the biggest difference as the 980 was 6 FPS faster than the 390X here. Despite this, the frame time performance was much the same. As was the case with F1 2015, we find that both graphics cards were able to deliver silky smooth performance in Grid Autosport, despite the 980 offering considerably better performance. With an average of 92 FPS, the 980 was 18% faster than the 390X in this game. As we've found to be the case more often than not, the 980 and 390X deliver very similar performance, this time when testing with Grand Theft Auto V. The 980 was on average just one frame faster and despite the same minimum frame rate, the 980 also delivered slightly better frame time performance as well. The Hitman Absolution performance favoured the 390X by a small margin as it was 3 FPS faster when comparing the average frame rate and just 1 FPS faster for the minimum frame rate. Both the 980 and 390X averaged a playable 79 FPS in Mad Max, though the 390X did drop to a slightly lower 64 FPS. This meant that the 980 did provide better frame time performance, but with both cards at or under the 20 millisecond mark, the difference was negligible. Metro Redux still proved to be very demanding as the 980 averaged just 42 FPS. That said, this meant it was 4 FPS faster than the 390X. The 390X took home the win in Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor with an average of 54 FPS and a minimum of just 45 FPS. The 980 wasn't a great deal slower with 51 FPS and a minimum of 43 FPS, but the 390X was a clear winner here. Unsurprisingly, the 980 enjoys a rather large win in the heavily Gameworks injected Project Cards, winning by a 20% margin over the 390X. That said, the 390X still delivered a respectable 60fps average at 1440p and the frame time performance wasn't bad either. This time we find that although the 980 provided stronger average performance in Sleeping Dogs, it was slightly slower when comparing the minimum frame rate. 
Even with the latest NVIDIA game ready driver, Star Wars Battlefront plays considerably better on AMD hardware. This isn't surprising though, given this is an AMD supported title and it is possible NVIDIA can make up some ground. Nevertheless, for now the game is best played on AMD hardware and the 390X was 23% faster than the 980. The 980 provided slightly better performance in Thief with 82 frames per second, opposed to 78 FPS for the 390X. That said, both graphics cards delivered very smooth performance. The 980 offered a reasonable performance gain in Total War Adela over the 390X with an average of 35 FPS opposed to just 30 FPS for the Radian. With Tress effects enabled, the 980 still does well with an average of 55 FPS making it 5 FPS faster than the 390X. Interestingly, while the 980 was faster in Tomb Raider using Tress effects, the 390X is faster in The Witcher 3 using Hairworks. What madness is this? With the game patched up to date, we find that Hairworks now runs very well in AMD hardware. It's a shame this feature was so damaging to performance when the game was released. Finally, we have Watch Dogs, and here the 980 and 390X deliver virtually identical performance, though it is interesting to note that the 390X did provide better frame time performance. There you have it, 22 games tested and a heap of data to crunch. Breaking it down quickly, the GeForce GTX 980 was on average just 3% faster than the Radeon R9 390X at 1440p when comparing the average frame rate and 4% faster for the minimum frame rate. Before we declare the 980 the obvious winner here, let's factor in some pricing information. Currently on Newegg, the cheapest 980 will set you back $440, though most are priced in the $470 to $480 range. Still, taking $440 as a baseline means that the 980 is at least 13% more expensive than the 390X, though we expect on average to find around an 18% price difference. This then makes the 390X the better value option as it's just 3% slower and at least 11% cheaper. Unfortunately, as is often the case, it's not that simple as there's yet more factors to consider. The 390X consumes at least 25% more power based on our testing and while we don't believe this will impact your electricity bill too much, it does speak to the card's true value. On average, we found that while the 390X provides a 13% overclock, the 980 doubles that with an average boost overclock of 1534 MHz for a 26% overclock. Also, we found that partner cards such as those from Gigabyte, for example, run cooler and quieter on the 980 than they do on the 390X. Taking all these factors into consideration, there are clear arguments for going either way. Still, if we were to pick a winner here, it would be the slightly slower Radeon R9 390X for the simple fact that out-of-the-box performance is much the same and it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unbox comparison. If you've got any questions at all, then please head to our forum at hardwareunbox.com or leave your question in the comments. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.